I love history and intrigue and movies such as the Enigma and the recently released imitation game stirred my imagination so I decided to take a visit to Bletchley Park where it all happened see the actual rooms where Enigma was decoded and the first programmable computer built where the movie the imitation game was filmed even to see a film set preserved in the mansion and walk through history and events that maybe changed the world. When one enters this place, there's immediately a feeling of walking in history. But it's not like walking into the Tower of London or Hastings Castle, where the history is remote and conjectured. In these channels of history, the desks and chairs remain, the typewriter, the bookshelves, even the coat on the back of the chair, urging us to imagine the owner has just stepped out for a minute. The task? To assemble the best brains in Britain, to break an unbreakable Nazi code to design a machine that would break every message every day so that the words of Shakespeare in Henry V, Act Two, Scene Two would become prophetic. The king hath note of all that they intend by interception which they dream not of. It now appears that Hitler had not even dreamed anyone could do it. To break the Enigma code was just the job for these enigmatic Brits. This place gives amazing insight into what the code breakers did in World War II. It said the work they did actually shortened the war by two years. They did it by doing something no one else had come up with. As a result, Bletchley Park also heralded the birth of the information age with the introduction of code breaking enabled by machines such as the bomb and the world's first electronic computer, Colossus. It all began when Captain Ridley's shooting party descended upon a mansion house in Buckinghamshire in late August 1938 and set in motion one of the most important events of World War II. It was a front for a team of people from MI6 that included scholars and intellectuals assembled to crack the Nazi secret codes. The most famous of the cipher systems to be broken was that created by the Enigma machine, which scrambled the message before it was sent using complex settings, and on being received was unscrambled using the same settings in reverse. This configuration meant there was 150 million, million, million combinations. As a result, the Germans believed the code was completely unbreakable within any reasonable time frame. One of the people assembled to solve the enigma was a Cambridge professor called Alan Turing. 
who on seeing the Enigma machine declared, I can break that. He was an extraordinary person with a great mind and deep insight. The film, The Imitation Game, is about him. There's been an exhibition about the film here since November 2014. It's to run for a year and features clothes worn by the actors and props used in the film. Very interesting and amazing how the machines have been recreated, especially the bomb machine. Turin had written a paper on artificial intelligence whilst at Cambridge that was to be the first insight into the computer age in which we now live, proclaiming his belief in the ability of machines to not only do complex mathematics, but many other things, even write sonnets, though with equal insight he said that such sonnets would be best appreciated by other machines. Of course. That was Siri. Hey Siri, do the hands of a clock move clockwise? Not if you're the clock. The people at Bletchley Park have done a superb job. I trust this film will whet your appetite to visit. Finally, I asked Siri to write a sonnet about me. His creation is too close for comfort, though I need to program him to say it right. Shall I compare thee to a Cambridge don? Thou art more like a useless French cretin. For none will ever wrongly think thee smart, unless that one compares thee to a fart. Would you like to reply? No. It has been a very nice time here in Bletchley Park. Somebody's trying to FaceTime. Uh-oh. It is I. Okay. Where are you? Yeah, we're in Bletchley Park. 